Welcome back to another episode of Light Beer, Dark Money. I'm Sean Noble. And I'm Chris Clements. And we had the first of the Republican debates last night. Yes, it was quite entertaining. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, uh, quick takeaway, just overall takeaway, yeah. was any of those people on the stage would make a remarkable president in comparison to Biden. And any of them, I think, could beat Biden. Any of them. You think? Yep. Even Asa. Even Vivek? I think Vivek, well, yeah. There's a little bit. Okay, let's, let's, just, <laughs> let's just get right into it. Well, I mean, a, let's put it this petulant. way. Our, our, our bench is significantly yes. deeper than there, the Democrat there's, bench. There's, there's no doubt that, that our bench is impressive and that I thought the debate was a, a good one, even with people I, I don't necessarily agree with. It was, they were good, making good points, slinging some good mud back and forth. And, uh, and, and there's certain people who did about it as well as could be expected. I think certain, certain individuals exceeded expectations. Absolutely. And, and Others then other not. individuals did, you know, about as best as they could do when they're just trying to raise money for whatever they're raising money for. Whatever. You know, H Asa Hutchinson, I don't know what you're doing, but you know, good luck to you, uh, Doug Burgum. Nice guy. I've met him several times at, at some events. Very nice guy. Super smart guy. Probably shouldn't be on the stage. Well, my guess is that both Asa and Burgum are probably not going to make the cut next No, time. I don't think so either. Um, I know you like Tim Scott. He didn't really distinguish himself no, last night. He was, he was, he was there, he and was he there. said some nice things, but he didn't, you know, didn't stand out. You know, I thought the... From the debate stage, the obvious winner was Tucker Carlson. Uh, maybe. I mean, I mean, 100 million views uh, with his. If you believe that. If you believe that. I think 95% of those are bots. Oh, you um, think? Yeah. Yeah. But, oh, uh, no question. I mean, it, look, it, 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 it's, it's not possible that it's. 180 million or whatever it is 100 million is what the latest count was. well it was, it was like 180 was it did yeah. it go up to that which, which yeah. is, which oh, is that's, absurd. that's absurd absurd i i'd seen 100 million but wh i mean whatever andrew tate's was 40 yeah or something and that was uh, the biggest that he had for whatever he's been reason. he's been pulling about 20 or 30 though but and, yeah but th this and 180 like within 10 seconds yes um but, but it did you know that and frankly it was one of tucker's least interesting interviews i've ever seen it, there were no fireworks. There was it was completely boring. Yeah, it wasn't. It wasn't. And he and, didn't and ask any. It, I mean, I I was I was uncomfortable because of how pansy Tucker was towards Trump. Well, and Trump was pretty much he wasn't throwing fireballs either. No, I mean it. He and, wasn't and, attack, I, really attacking anybody. He I, just was. I mean, it, it it was it was sad because I thought Tucker had. More guts than that. Yep. He asked ask a tough question like, hey, Donald, you didn't get a bunch of stuff done the first time. Like when he said what, what you plan to minute do the 44 next time. Yeah. out of a 46 minute, I mean, it took 44 minutes out of a 46 minute interview to get to an actual question about what are you going to do when you're president? And he's like, oh, build a wall. Well, yeah, you said that last time. <laughs> Good grief, man. Anyway. The, the only thing I noticed about the interview is that Donald's hair is not orange anymore. As orange. As, yeah. No, it's pretty gray. Yeah. Yeah, he's, it's, it's starting. Now, going back to the interview, I mean, in all seriousness, I thought who exceeded expectation in all, in all seriousness, and I, I might be a little bit biased, but was Mike Pence. He probably had the most to lose. You and think I he thought exceeded he, expe expectation? Yeah, because, with the crowd that being what it was, I thought he did better than I thought he would do. Maybe it's just my own bias, but I thought he did better than I thought he would. I thought, I, he, I thought he was a robot. You did? Yeah. Well, you know why? Because you were watching. I was listening. Uh, yeah. And so listening to it, it gives you a different perspective. I don't yeah. watch the debates. That's, and and listening to, to him. Days. Yeah. Well, back to the, you were, you were. I'm what, going back to the Nixon-Kennedy Nixon debates. <laughs> I mean, because that was, that was actually something that, that was a pivotal mo moment in our history. Yeah. Nixon won that debate. But if you watch it on TV, Kennedy won that debate. Right. So I wanted to listen to the substance of the debate and not get involved in people's facial expressions or reactions or anything else. I thought he did well from that perspective. 
I thought Nikki Haley did well from that perspective. Well, Nikki Haley did well. I so I thought so, Vivek came across as kind of a clown. And he, he Vivek had a pretty strong start, although he 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 took some jabs that I thought were a little bit over the top for a guy who's brand new to this and young. Um, saying you know the the super pup super pack puppet the you know bought and paid for. Uh, yeah, that was all that, at DeSantis, uh, right? Well, a bunch and of them. Every, um, yeah, he was, and, and then, I think that was his. That was his strategy. His strategy was, I'm just going to be the flamethrower, and then you just need to put me out. Well, the the, the, the I mean, to me, it's the the question is if you think because he said Donald Trump has been the was the best president in the 21st century, why the f are you running then? Because <laughs> he's not running for president. With that statement, he proved. He's not running for president. He has no organization, really. He's so what's he just, doing? He's just he's not going to be vice president. He's just he, you know maybe treasury secretary or I, maybe I, maybe undersecretary of the of the muckety mucks. Dude, he I don't needs know. To get some experience. I, I don't mean, know. But the I, only thing I now when when I finally because I was driving around, I'm listening, and I just find I, I do better with that with debates. And I got home and I was watching, and the, what struck me almost immediately as I was listening and watching because I was doing stuff around the house too. Vivek's teeth. Those are some <laughs> shiny, shiny choppers. I mean, I need to go see his dentist. You want you want his dentist. Oh my goodness. Vivek, if you're listening, please let us know. Oh who your dentist my goodness. Is. Those those were so bright I had to turn down the TV just a little bit. <laughs> Let's get the contrast. Uh, I mean, that was actually I think the biggest, you know, his biggest his, his brightest moment last night, I think, was his teeth. It was his teeth. Yeah. He's got a Got quite the and then what do you think about Chris Christie? Well, I thought Chris Christie did exactly what we expected him to do. He had some pretty good zingers. The chat GPT, GPT candidate um, was pretty good. The uh, That was good. <laughs> uh, I mean, uh, you know, and, 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 and he had a strong, strong ending. I mean, it, it's true. Uh, Chris Christie is the guy who has, has beat an incumbent Democrat yep. uh, in a blue state. And uh, the last time that that happened, the last time that we had an incumbent Democrat that was was beat was by Reagan, governor from a blue state. He pointed that out. So, so I, I mean, Christie has more to offer than people give us, you know, give him credit for. And uh, because he he was a good governor, um, and you know, it it'll be interesting to see if he pivots a little bit on leaning in more on his experience as a governor and less on, I'm going to take so, down So Trump. more on policy and what, yeah. he, what he plans to do for the country yeah. rather than just bashing Trump right? and being, the, being the never Trumper of the, of I, the group, I, obviously. Yeah, and I find it interesting that you you thought Pence exceeded expectations because if you watched it, Pence came across as completely intolerable in, the, in just a very like, oh my gosh, dude, get over yourself. I mean, he just is so smug. Yeah. So smug. It was insane. Yeah. Let's talk about me. You know, I mean, let me answer the question about myself. I mean, it's come on, okay. dude. I mean, it was it was embarrassing. I thought he defended thought. his position and what he did for the country on January 6th, though. Well, yeah, yeah, he did. You know, and but, and but I thought was, that was a, that was probably his best moment. And he, but he's leaned into it a, a little bit. I mean, it's like, yeah. OK, yeah, you upheld the Constitution. Duh. Right. That's right. what you're supposed to do. And pretty much everyone there thanked him for it. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks yeah. for doing that. Um, so, so the big Nikki, question. Nikki Haley definitely exceeded expectations. I think we're going to see a bounce from uh, for, her. Know, for her. Uh, now, you've got the, you know, a lot of people saying, oh, she's a warmonger. She's a, you know, this is outrageous. She's a leaning in on the Ukraine. But, you know, she made some pretty strong points and, and, and shut down Vivek pretty hard. I thought, yeah, across, that was. That was pretty a, effective. Work. That was a good beat down. Yeah. And, and uh, she did well with that. I mean, that was, was, that was, was her big best, moment. It was the best beat down of the night. Yeah, that was that was her big moment. And, and uh, DeSantis lead article in National Review. Haley and Pence are the only foreign policy candidate. I thought Haley eclipsed Pence. Oh, yeah, absolutely. For sure. Well, she, she's yeah. I mean, she's just got she's got more it. Yeah. Than, than he does. Um, DeSantis. Yeah, he was. He was fine. I heard an analysis this morning. DeSantis really didn't have to do anything. All he had to do was just well show up, to be do, there, and not not be the source of, of fire. 
Well, that, but he also needed to not do any of the things that the Super PAC memo yeah. said, which he and did he a didn't. pretty good job of avoiding that. He didn't. Um, so Our yeah. friend Cody Ritchie was there last night with his family. Oh, was he? Yeah, because you saw a picture of that. So cheers out to Cody. That's yeah, awesome. There you go. That you took his, uh, his daughter's been working for um, one of the candidates. Oh, good. So it's all good. Yeah. Yeah, I uh, the, the 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 moderators did do a great was, job of they were keeping ju- it under control. I'm sorry, I'm tired of Martha McCollum and Brett Baer at these Fox debates. They're they just they're not very competent in what what in just corralling the candidates, yeah. and making sure things run the way they should. I thought the crowd was good. At first of all, it was disarming, but then I'm like, you know what? This is kind of fun. What the heck? Well, I, you know, debates are so different now than they used to be. That, you know, once Trump came on the scene in 2016, debates have, have completely changed. <laughs> they become they, they, completely cha- they become a, they more become, a circus. Yeah, more, more of a circus, more, more of a, of a circus. ring ring match. Yeah, um, which is very interesting. Who we missed? Who we, we talked about? Everybody. Well, we talked about because uh, Bergam. And Asa, not going to be there next time, probably. Yeah. Uh, Tim Scott, me. Like him, but didn't stand out. Yeah, he just didn't stand out. Nice guy, um, obviously. Um, and then, so, so, you know, I so, mean, but, but, but the, the, the kind of the sad thing. So what I'm hearing, I think you think like Nikki won. You think she won? I, th- I think she did the best of, I mean, she exceeded. So she if, really if you go exceeded. from the expectation yeah. game, she, she exceeded the expectations beyond anyone else's. So she had whether big, she won the debate, yeah, you, you could, a lot of people are going to say Vivek did. Um, some pe- people say DeSantis did. Depends on how you how you frame it. But I think she be, she exceeded expectations better than anybody else. Those three definitely shine else. the most. Yeah, um, but but the kind of the sad thing about it is that it doesn't matter. Yeah, because Trump Trump's going to win. Trump's still 50, 60 <laughs> points ahead. This is this is like it's a sideshow. And, and I mean, and whether whether it was a milk toast interview, which I, I, I agree with that. It was more just Trump, you know, giving him an audience. Or if it was thirty million or forty million or twenty million, they still won the night. And that Trump's poll numbers aren't gonna go down. No. And and this is well it's almost an exercise in, in Utility. It's, it's well. I, I guess. I guess you could say, you know, unless something really dramatic happens this fall, and yes, it's early. Yes, there's a, a plenty of yes, time for I a mean, lot of things to happen. It, Trump it's, could. It's could. It's not even the end of August. No one's paying attention yet. Really, Trump could fall over dead. I mean, um, God forbid. But he's being arraigned but, today, right? Yeah, and in Georgia, and so so there needs to be, you know, options. <laughs> I, <laughs> I guess. guess. <laughs> So what, what options do the Democrats have right now? Because if you looked at what happened on Monday with the president of the United States visiting Maui and the pathetic, perf- another yet decrepit, disgusting, dithering, it would have been better if he did not go. pathetic performance by a man who can't tie his own shoes. It's, it's, I mean, c- could you imagine Donald Trump? Well, forget Donald Trump. Anybody going to a disaster like like what's happened in Maui or Katrina or any other hurricane or anything and trying to empathize, show empathy by by talking about a little kitchen fire that happened (laughs) all these 15 years ago. I almost lost my... My cat and my, my stingray. And my Corvette. My Corvette. Yeah. It, I mean, could you that, imagine it, the press it would and be what would lead, happen? It would be lead headlines Even if for George days. W. Bush, Ronald Reagan, who, you know, Eisenhower, who, pick a Republican. Yeah. The press would be inflamed. Yeah. And, and this press gives him a pass in the most grotesque way. It is... It is, and grotesque is a pretty good way to put it. Like this it is, is grotesque. grotesque. People, the, what's coming out of Maui right now, the, the the testimony. I mean, the testimony of people saying that they were trying to escape Front Street, and the police had the entire town blocked, and people died on Front Street because of they, but the police would not let people escape, escape. 
And the president of the United States has the gall, the, the complete stupidity to go there and tell a story about a little tiny kitchen fire where nobody died. It was started with a lightning strike, though, Chris. Yeah, <laughs> Well, there's some people saying that that this fire started with a you know a space laser, which is crazy. But this is we are going to find out more and more about the incompetence of of that day. Of you know, first of all, having all these children you know in their homes alone while their parents are working, the police not allowing people to leave Maui, leave Front Street get out and being incinerated in their cars and and more and then the the sirens not going off and and the, and the man who was supposed to flip the switch on that justifying it on national television right saying well the, when the sirens go off with you know the people of maui are trained to head to the hills I'm like not not if they see you there's flames exactly. in the hills exactly it's like oh so so you don't no. trust the people to di- i mean it's like you you were you told give not them a heads up. not to to flip the switch. Who told you not to flip the switch? Somebody Wait, he was told not to switch. I, I thought that I, was his own decision. I I can't believe that. I Whoa. I don't believe that. I think that's going to be one of the truths that will be revealed. Oh boy. Well, it was but, it's a terrible tragedy, and but but the president was so so. What are the Democrats going to do? Because you can you can already see in the press. I mean, take take the the blunder of the kitchen fire aside. You can already see like. Hunter Biden stuff. Everything is is beginning to roll. There's going to be an impeachment inquiry announced here in two weeks, for mm-hmm. sure. To your point at the be. last podcast, which yeah. was a great point. It has to happen. You can't have this going down in, in Florida and Georgia and not and not flip the switch on, on our impeachment. And it, who are they going to get? Newsom? Uh, could be Newsom. I, I still think that there is well his state is in a death spiral. Yeah. The, so here's I, I still think that Michelle Obama is a is a real option. Um, I think that yeah. the uh, so I've read that there well, is based some, on the fact the Obamas are basically, you know, I measuring mean, curtains. Well, the they, they've they I don't have, think they ever never left. left. I don't they think their curtains left. were ever torn down. Well, they, they've, yeah, they never left D.C. The Obama still got his hands in everything. And. The you, you just pick up little things here and there when you read the insider DC like Axios yeah. or Politico. Yeah, of course. There's whisperings that that Biden people are frustrated that Obama and his team are not leaning in more and being more vocal in their support of Biden. <laughs> well, Why would they? I, I. It's not that they're leaning in. They're they're circling like sharks. That's that's kind of what I'm thinking. I mean, I so I think. Oh, and that, by the way, you're you know the majority of the White House staff is all Obama holdovers anyway. So right. why wouldn't they be? Right. They and, know the truth. They and know so, that you, you know you can't even walk up a flight of stairs without right. falling down. They have to get off the the short stairs off the plane because never underestimate Joe's ability to f it up. That's right. And Maui, Afghanistan, the border. It's I mean, just the economy. Thing after thing after thing. And now they're talking about that there's a new variant of, of COVID. We're going to have to mask up again. Yeah, that's not going to happen. Yeah. Can you imagine? His his presidency would be essentially over. There would be revolts in the street. Yeah. I, which I think they they would be counting on. Probably. Yeah. yeah. If, you, if you want to get conspiratorial about it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well... Um, it'll be interesting, just interesting to see what happens at the next date, next debates in about a month. And where's, where's that? Debate it's going to be at the Reagan library. Well, at least it'll be in friendly territory. Yeah. 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 Simi yeah. Valley, like the right. one little red spot right. <laughs> in the sea of blue. It will be interesting to see whether Trump goes to that one or not. Um, I, I, you know, a lot of people are saying Trump was it was a mistake for Trump not to go. Yeah. I totally disagree with that. I think he made the right call. Yeah, for I him. think he did I mean, too. I mean, I think it, it. This was a debate of the undercard. I mean, it is there. There is there is Trump, and then there's everybody else. And yeah. so I, I wouldn't be surprised if he skips the next one. Yeah, until those poll numbers start moderating, um, with people exiting. And then, and then some people I mean, rising. If, unless there's and some, his yeah, his poll numbers need to come down through some force of nature. Uh, yeah, he can just skip it. Yeah, 
I mean, I, I don't, I mean, it, he's got the biggest lead in Iowa. I mean, and, and the state polls are the ones I pay attention to yeah. because the national polls are kind of meaningless. But his lead in Iowa is is larger than than any lead ever. It's it's a bigger lead than what Bush had in two thousand hmm. or in ninety nine. Yeah. Um. So you know, it's I I don't think he made a I like I said still not a huge fan, but I I think he made the right call for his his campaign. Oh yeah. There's no reason it. for him to be there. I mean, I'm a little and, bit. And then nobody really attacked him last night other than Christie anyway. I mean, and, and his attacks were yeah. kind of milk toast. Pence, you know, basically said Trump told me, you know, Trump wanted me to put himself above the Constitution. So that was obviously an attack. But for the most part, and you know, I think Nikki, there was, there was a few things here and there, but nothing, no, no. haymakers. No. And yeah. no haymakers against DeSantis either. Right, really, I mean, you had, you, I mean, you have Vivek with the with the pack comment, yeah, like you referenced. That was mostly directed at him, but that that was nothing. All DeSantis had to do yesterday was live to fight another day and not be the the focus of uh, slings and arrows. Right, and he did that. Right, but it will be interesting to see how if there is any movement in the numbers over the next week or so. Yeah. So maybe when we get back together next week, we can see if there's been movement. I. I yeah, I don't. I doubt it. I, I bet Vivek gets a bump. Ve- I, I would say I would guess that Vivek gets a bump. DeSantis might hold steady, maybe a little bump. I think Nikki Haley probably gets a little bump. She's yeah. pretty low, so it's she's like three percent. Yeah, uh, so she, she can get probably, to five. I mean, you never know. <laughs> it's it's strange. Trump's at happened. sixty. Um, I mean, she did have the classic Margaret Thatcher line. I was waiting for it. You know. If you want something said, ask a man. If you want something done, ask a woman. Yeah. Uh, well, she solid. also, to her credit, uh, spoke some truth to power about spending, about the the corruption in yes. Washington, and that was that was her strong one of her strongest well, the, moments. The, uh, uh, absolutely. In addition to the slap down on on Vivek, but saying that hey, we're in this the the fiscal situation we're in because Republicans signed on to a two trillion dollar COVID spending bill. That's and, where she was critical of Trump yeah, and the Republicans. Yeah, and and, and, and either we get our house in order as Republicans, or we're going to be, you know, in, yeah. in, in deeper trouble. Well, and people, you know, there's some people who don't know much about her. When she was, you know, she got elected as governor. She went. She was kind of went after the the corrupt establishment. Yeah, and and put herself on the line, and it was it was impressive. So, um, you know, the 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 knock on her from some of the some folks is going to be that she's, you know, a warmonger is what they're going to call it because she's a hawk, you know, whatever. Um, but I think that there's, you know, the American people are still, uh, they still view America. The majority of American people still view America as the beacon of hope in the world that has a responsibility. The shining city upon a hill. Yeah, that, that has a responsibility to engage outside their borders when you know, freedom is at stake and you can make a pretty strong case legitimately that we're in Ukraine, you know, we're, we're helping Ukraine to stop Russia from taking over Ukraine and then moving West to NATO countries where we would actually be engaged with our own troops. So the way to stop that is to prop up Ukraine. That's a legitimate argument. Is it, Gonna work? I don't know. It's, it's but it's questionable whether it's been working. You know, my my son asked me a, a really interesting question last night. He's like, "Well, how can all these people be up on stage and they're debating each other and they're yelling at each other? They must not like each other." And I said, "You know what the interesting interesting thing is? There might be one or two that maybe have some of that dislike, but I I've met every, most of those people on that stage. I've been blessed enough to run in those circles and and meet them." They're all really nice people. They're all really good people. They all want what's best for the country. I have no doubt in my mind on that. And at the end of the debate, they can all shake hands. And, yeah. And, and and some of them are very close friends. I know that for a fact. And and just go on about their business. Right. And that's what's great about our country. Well, it is. I mean, we we you know they look. There's at least eighty percent of that they, they can agree on things about eighty percent of the stuff, yeah. right? I mean, from from the, the the disparity of the eight people on the stage. And then the ninth with Trump, we're all in an eighty percent, you know, block. 
and that's that's enough. Yeah. Now, I mean, that's you know, there are some who want to try to you know, those that are not the actors on the stage, the actual candidates. There's people that are the surrogates or people trying to, you know, on Twitter, whatever, that are just completely out to lunch as far as how outrageous the attacks are that they put on other Republicans. Yeah. But when it comes to the candidates themselves, I think they right recognize we're we're pretty close in comparison to what we've got in the White House. Oh, right? absolutely. And that's the key. So. And on that note, God bless America. Yeah. Thanks for <laughs> listening, everybody. Take care. Take care.